Welcome to part 3 of the Circle Tangent Visuals in Unity Tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've calculated circles that are tangent to an inner and an outer circle. In this part we will add interactivity by controlling the position and size of the inner circle with a game controller. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to create these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Andrew LeBoy, Devin the Dude, Frere Thibaut, Derek Vechter, Asperdine and Funky Deluxe. We will be mapping the position of the horizontal and vertical position of the left thumbstick. The output of the thumbstick are two floats for its x and y axis between minus 1 and 1. We want to move the inner circle accordingly with the outer circle. To know how far we can move the circle, we need to subtract the radius of the outer from the inner circle and multiply this with the values we read from the thumbstick. We'll then add another parameter to specify how much distance the inner circle must keep at minimum from the tangent of the outer circle. Now you can see that the inner circle doesn't move further than 90% of its distance, leaving some space for small circles at the edge. We will also add a smoothness to the movement of the inner circle, so that it will smoothly move to its target's position or smoothly fall back to the center when the player lets go of the thumbstick. Once we've written the movement, we'll bind the left and right triggers on the controller to increase or decrease the radius of the inner circle. Let's make the circle tangent system interactive by controlling it with an Xbox controller. In this example I will use the Xbox 360 controller that I connect with USB to my Windows desktop. If the drivers of your Xbox controller are installed correctly, you should see a debug message appear in Unity once you connect your controller with USB to the computer. What we want to do is to change the position of the inner circle based on the position of the thumbstick on the Xbox controller and not just based on these numbers here. Now we need to have some way of reading the values of the buttons on the controller. And to do this we can go to Edit and to Project Settings. And under the Project Settings we've got the input. And under Axis we have all the different axes that are already set up. For example Horizontal, Vertical, some Fire, Buttons and Submit and Cancel. Now for this example we want to set up the left thumbstick, the left trigger and the right trigger of the controller. Now let's show the predefined horizontal axis. Here we've got a bunch of parameters. Starting with the name. And we can use the, this name in the script to communicate with the parameters that are under here. Now let's have a look at type. So the type is set to key or mouse button. But we can also set this to a joystick axis. Now Unity already set up for us that the controller already works. So if we close this one, we can go a little bit down and there's another horizontal and you'll see here that the type is joystick axis. Now have a look at the option underneath, which is the axis. And in the axis we can specify a whole bunch of different axes. At Unity Wiki you can find which axis is what. Now let's see, we need to use the left stick, the left trigger and the right trigger. The left stick is the X axis. And that is the same on Windows, Mac and Linux. Now the Y axis is the Y axis. The left trigger is on Windows 9 and the right trigger 10. On Macintosh it is 5 and 6 and on Linux it is 3 and 6. So the bindings are different on different platforms. I will use the bindings for Windows which is 9 and 10 for the left and right trigger. So the left thumbstick is already set up, so let's now add two more axes for the left and right trigger. So I'll make this 20. We'll get two more here. And we'll rename this to trigger L. And we'll call this one trigger R. Now the gravity, I'm just going to set this to 3 and 3. Not going into much detail there. 3, 3. And we're going to set the type to become the joystick axis. And the axis is going to be 9 for left. And for the right, it's going to be 10. And this is going to be a joystick axis. And now we've set up the input for what I want to do with this tutorial. So let's close this window. 
and let's open up the tangent circle script. Let's start by creating some variables about the input. And the first thing we need is to get the X and Y coordinates of the left thumbstick. So I'm going to create a private vector 2 for this. So we can get the X and Y coordinates of the left thumbstick. And I'm going to call this the thumbstick left, TSL. Let's scroll a little bit down. And we'll create a new void. And we'll call this the player input. And let's call this player input in the update. Now we'll assign the horizontal and vertical input into the TSL. So we're going to say TSL is a new vector 2. And the first vector is going to be the input dot get axis. And here we need to specify the axis name. And the name is horizontal with a capital H. And for the vertical, we'll get the input dot get axis. And this one is called the vertical. Now we need to use the thumbstick left inputs to calculate where the position of the inner circle is going to be. So we'll say inner circle is a new vector four. And for the X position, we need to get the TSL dot its X position. And we want the inner circle to move not further than hitting the tangent of the outer circle. So we'll do this by multiplying this value by the outer circle dot its W value, which is the radius, minus the inner circle dot W. And to make sure that the inner circle always starts at the center of the outer circle, we'll do a plus of the outer circle dot its x component. Now for the y component, we'll just say 0.0f. And for the z component, we can copy paste the line of the x. We'll paste that here. And instead of using the x, we'll use the y. And for the outer circle, we'll use the z component. And for the radius of the circle, for now, we'll just use the inner circle dot w value. So let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now when we play the scene and we have the controller connected, we can control the inner circle by the controller. Now you'll see that it goes directly to the place where I put my thumb and it hits the outer circle. Now let's add a parameter to set a minimum distance towards the outer circle tangent. So we're going to create a public float and we'll call this float the distance to the outer tangent and we're gonna add a range to this one and we'll set the range between 0 and 1 now if this value is set to 0 0.5 it will only move 50% of its amount if it's set to 0 it will hit the tangent of the outer tangent and if it's set to 1 it won't move at all so let's add that into the equation and we can do that really easy by placing this part between an extra parentheses and we're going to multiply this by between parentheses 1 minus the distance outer tangent now let's do the same for its z direction so between parentheses and we're going to multiply it by 1 minus distance outer tangent Let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now we have a new parameter here. So let's set this to 0 0.2. So it now should leave 20% of its moving distance between the outer circle and the inner circle. As you can see, it does leave the 20%. So if we change this value up to a higher value, and you can see that I can move it even less further away, if I set it all the way down, we can move all the way to the edge again. Now let's add a smooth movement to the movement of the inner circle. And to do this, we'll implement something called an asymptote. So let's add another private vector two, and I'm going to call this the TSL smooth. And we'll create another float to control how much we want to smooth it out. So let's create a public float 
and we'll call this the movement smooth. And we'll create a smooth function on the TSL smooth. So we'll say TSL smooth is a new vector two. And for this X, we're going to say that the TSL smooth dot X is going to be multiplied by one minus of the movement smooth that we have plus the real input of the TSL. So we'll get TSL dot its X value and we'll multiply that by the movement smooth. Now that is for the X and for the Y we'll do the same thing as this line. So let's copy this and paste it here. Put a semicolon there and we'll change this to a Y and this one to a Y as well. Now instead of using TSL in the inner circle calculations, we're going to use the TSL smooth. So let's replace the TSL with TSL smooth. And let's save the script and go back to Unity. I forgot to make a range attribute of it. So let's create a range attribute for this one. So we'll say range between zero and one. Save that. Now we can use the slider and we'll set the smooth in to 0 0.1. Now, when we play the scene, you can see that it smoothly is going towards its position and smoothly back to its original position in the center. And if I change this variable to a lower variable, it will go even slower. And if we change it up to a higher number, it will go faster. Now, the only thing that's left is to change the size of the inner circle by using the left and right triggers on the controller. And for that, we'll create a new private float in which we'll store the radius change. And we'll create another public float to set how fast we want the radius change to happen. So we'll call this radius change speed and let's make a range attribute out of this range between 0 0.1 to 10. Now at the player input function we're going to set the radius change so we'll say radius change so what I want to happen is that when I press the left trigger that this value is going towards 1 and when I press the right trigger this one is going towards minus 1. So when I press both triggers at the same time, the result should be zero. So to do this is we can get the input dot get axis. And we're going to get the axis of trigger L. And we're going to subtract from that the input dot get axis of the trigger R. Now, based on this value, we want to change the inner circle dot w to a new value. So we'll get its current radius plus between parentheses, the radius change multiplied by time dot delta time multiplied by the radius change speed that we can set. Now that should be all. So let's save the script and go back to unity. Now I get an error. I can't convert a double to a float. So apparently I forgot to say an F here. So with that in place, let's save this again. Go back to Unity. Then we should now be able to change the radius by pressing the left or right triggers. And as you can see, it grows and shrinks. And based on its size, we can still move it around and it will still use the same values. We can also in decrease it so much that it's inverted. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we got some control over the visuals. Now this system becomes especially cool when we use 3D objects instead of 2D circles. So what I'm going to change really quickly here is we're not going to instantiate the inner and outer circle anymore. So I'm going to comment these two lines out. And also, we're not going to set the positions of these inner and outer circles anymore. So let's comment all of these out. Let's save the script. Go back to Unity. 
and instead of using the circle we're going to use another prefab and for now I'll get a sphere so let's create a sphere I'm just gonna make a prefab of the sphere so drag and drop this into the prefabs so now we've got a sphere there that we can use in our script let's remove the sphere go to tangent circles and place the sphere in the prefabs Let's actually remove the sphere collider on this one. Um, go back. Now let's play the scene again. And now we've got all these 3D spheres here. So let's select them all so you can see a bit better of the shape. And now when I move around, you can see that the shape is becoming like one shape that is deformed. But it's just a lot of spheres inside of each other. But I think it's a very cool thing. And we're going to play around with this uh, in the next episode where we're going to make this an audio visualization that is interactive because we can move this around and change the size of it. That's all for this part on making the system interactive. In the next and final part, I'll show you how to use this system to create some stunning audio visuals by animation, color changes and using different 3D shapes to create interesting compositions. If you got stuck at any point during this tutorial, you can find the source of each part at my Patreon. Thank you for following this part and as always, happy coding!